in this episode I'm starting with my sail repairs and sharing my experience with sails since I left Europe. I'm meeting my new neighbors at something rare as Indonesian sailors. Paying my penalty and are enjoying local food and even my new friend's hospitality on their catamaran. Join me as I'm sailing around the world on Be Free, a Bavaria 55 cruiser. After a bit rough sail from San Laki to Tual, where 60 knots of wind destroyed my mainsail, I arrived the immigration one day before my visa expired. So apparently the immigration office is closed until Monday the 12th. Back on board, it's time to have a look at the damaged sail and to see if it's even possible to do any repairs. The nearest sail loft is in Bali and that's now 1100 nautical miles away. So this is something I just have to fix here in Tual. 60 knots of wind is brutal and the sail even being reefed down to reef 3 had no chance. Some of the damages are easier to fix than others. And because this is things that can happen, I do have a proper equipped sewing bag with lots of things. Also a lot of different threads and of course needles. Um, this don't come in this tiny little emergency kit. So you need to expand your emergency kit when you're on a long distance sailing. After inspecting this sail, I decided that this one I should probably save for a professional sailmaker to fix, as this one still can have some miles to go. This was the sail I had saved as a backup that was going to take me to Europe. Instead I will have to look at the even more damaged mainsail I changed back in Fiji, because that one is not so important anymore, at least if my stitching is not professional enough. I had a service on this sail. Uh, not that long time ago, but of course uh, it's long distance uh, crossing the Pacific and um, I had it uh, full serviced on uh, in Martinique So this sail has not that many miles. Uh, it's I would say maybe 20,000 miles So I'm surprised I would expect it to last longer Throughout my adventure I've tried to take good care of my sails, as it's not only quite expensive to ignore maintenance and services, but also this is my main propulsion, sailing around the world. So I'm a bit surprised my spare mainsail did not last long after being fully serviced either, only from Fiji to here in Tual. This sail was serviced by a sailmaker and claimed to be almost as good as new. And I spent 2000 euros on this job. Don't take me wrong, 60 knots of wind is absolutely brutal. But I do wonder if servicing a sail is worth the money compared to just get a new one. Still, a new one for my yacht is around 9000 euros, so it's not cheap. And the one I bought new in Spain only lasted to Fiji. Being quite nice weather for a change, I really felt the need of getting off my boat and stretch my legs a bit. Sometimes it's good to just escape and think about other things. I also need to take out cash from the ATM here over several days, only to make sure I have enough for Monday morning at the immigration. Ah, they mean serious here. <laughs> Look at this ride. <laughs> And uh, it turned out to be uh, special forces and uh, really friendly and uh, they offered me some water. <laughs> special police. Yes. Special police. Special police boats. Primo. Yes. Primo, Brigade Mobile. <laughs> and there we have a guy. Hello. And one secret one in there. Wow. <laughs> and they are actually heavy armed and they have their space camp just behind here. So, uh, wh why are you here? Uh, safety area. Safety for the area? Area, yes. Yeah. 
So it's uh, because of some election, president uh, election, I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's something we done. But it's heavily armed, and uh, this is very good because they made a camp uh, with a special force, uh, police, military police, or something. And my dinghy is tied just behind them, so I don't think I can get better uh, guard for my dinghy. <laughs> Even though I feel I had a rough start on my Indonesian adventure, I'm still getting more and more fascinated by this nation. I'm working on a better solution when re-entering Indonesia later. Also looking at some options for my next move that might include a quite exotic place, not many visits, and that's East Timor. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy being in Tuval, as this is also a place not many tourist visits. And right here, I'm just as exotic to these friendly guys as they are to me. And how surreal is it to be pulled over while walking, offering water and a friendly chat with the special forces. The president election here is a hot topic among some of those who live here. And something I did not know was that there is even some tribes here with young guys that can be a bit aggressive. I was told they sometimes had armed conflicts, so the special forces here was as preparedness for safety reasons. It's limitations on the ATMs here for how much I can withdraw, so I have tried to plan this a bit. So with my main purpose for going ashore sorted out and a few hours as a tourist, I pushed myself a bit to get back to the almost overwhelming work that's waiting. I do have a Sailrite machine on board, but honestly this machine I find a bit troublesome to use. I have a ton of different needles on board for different canvas and thickness. But the pressure have to be correct on the thread on both sides, still it often ends up like this or a mess in the stitching. Sometimes I succeed after a while, and sometimes not. And right now, I just want to throw the entire machine overboard. I'm not gonna bother you with my endless stitching, as it's probably as interesting as watching paint drying. I'm only sharing this video to give you a realistic image of the reality of long distance sailing. So I need to replace the section here. Um, I do have canvas on board. So actually here, unfortunately my Sailrite sewing machine is not a uh, friend with me at the moment. So I have to hand stitch this. I don't know what's wrong. I tried to figure it out. I spent an entire day trying to uh, use it, but it only made a mess with uh, the thread. So it's something wrong but I can't waste time on it anymore, so I just had to hand stitch this. So, but now I'm gonna head over to my neighbor. Well, that's quite interesting. It's only two sailboats here in this bay. Um, my neighbor is a catamaran and they are from Indonesia. And I'm so privileged to not only meet something exotic as Indonesian sailors, but even being invited to join them to experience some of the local food. Sometimes I just feel so lucky and blessed to have these totally random things happening to me, and to enjoy the company of such beautiful and friendly people. Basically rice. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically rice. Yeah. Basically. Uh, it will be a lembut. Yeah, yeah. this is uh, soft. Uh, this is made from this. This is the rice cake. So how to do it? They do it. They make some kind of container. Okay. 
from uh, coconut leaf some coconut leaf you know, and then put some uh, rice inside it and then they put that rice in a coconut container in the water and they boil it you know <laughs> until uh, yeah, boil it <laughs> yeah, like uh, one hour half it takes a uh, well, one hour, hour. Yeah, around one hour, hour. and then uh, one hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and one then uh, you know the rice inside it will become like this. like this. That's basically what it. Is. Uh. <laughs> so uh, and we have grilled chicken. And this is the crackers, crackers. The local salad. We call it gado gado. This is the peanut sauce. This is the peanut sauce. It, um, if you have Thousand Island or mayonnaise, <laughs> or well, we have peanut sauce. <laughs> this is the soto, the clear, the chicken clear soup. Chicken clear soup, clear chicken soup. So it's uh, Monday morning and uh, I'm going to the immigration office. This is uh, not gonna be easy. <laughs> I'm now at the uh, immigration office and um, looked at my passport. So we'll see how this goes. Super friendly and professional here in Tual, but it's gonna cost me 1 million rupiah per day. I'm just happy to have this sorted out and also happy to know that no extra gifts or money is required for this process. After I was done with immigration, a totally random guy stopped with his scooter to say hi. There's tons of scooter taxis here, so first I thought this was one that just wanted to sell me his service. Turn out he just wanted to be friendly and even wanted to show me around a bit of his island. Tual is in my opinion a more charming island than Samlaki. And I even found something rare as a pizza restaurant here. Hello. <laughs> this is the first time I ever had a pizza with an Indonesian spiced version. Different yet very good. It might not be as intense and as bad as in Saunaki, but every evening it has been pretty windy and rainy here as well. It's always in the middle of the night and uh, right now uh, the wind has come down a little bit but uh, it was gusting up to 47 knots and we are three different sailboats in this bay here in Tual and B3 is the only one that still hangs on anchor and uh, once again my uh, almost 60 kilo Mantus is uh, yeah what can I say I'm so thankful for this anchor and um, I'm also running my um, heading assistant, uh, which is uh, translate to my wind pilot. So on the autopilot setup, I use uh, wind hold and I have it on zero, which means it assists the boat to point the noise nose up against the wind. And that's um, a very nice little trick. I use it when it's uh, above 40, 45 knots because uh, the windage on this boat is uh, significant. Um, if I can avoid to be sideways, um, uh, especially when it comes really strong wind gusts, it helps a lot. But uh, most of all, a lot of chain out and an oversized anchor. And the thing with the oversized anchor is not only uh, because it uh, obviously makes me um, sleep very well and stay comfortable at anchor, but also with a bigger anchor it sets faster so what i experienced earlier with the smaller anchor uh, uh, when it was above 40 knots it was really hard to reset my anchor and uh, now with this anchor i have several time 
come into an anchorage and it's been above 40 knots I just dropped anchor and boom I'm done it's just unbelievable so if I can give a friendly hint of advice if you're gonna live aboard and have a comfortable life uh, there is no such a thing as an oversized anchor <laughs> actually that's you just need to buy so big anchor you can fit on your bow because uh, it's um, a game changer I feel so comfortable when I'm ashore and on adventure knowing that my boat will not drag um, right now like I, I feel so sorry for my friends they are circling around out here now and been circling for an hour and it's been crazy big waves building up very fast and uh, in this region these wind gusts are like explosive and together with rains and uh, yeah it's not not a nice situation so i really feel sorry for them and i have my vhf on and i told them to just hail me if they need any help and uh, i will jump in my dinghy and uh, come and assist but uh, it looks like they are having things under control but of course, uh, yeah, not nice to have to re-anchor in this weather. there come some squalls around 40 knots and they've been dragging like crazy so now I have um, when I went over with the rock anchor um, let's see if it makes the difference it's very difficult if not impossible to buy a new anchor in indonesia and the story here is their anchor was stolen in kupang and the substitute anchor is just not good enough so i could not watch this anymore and offer them to borrow my big rockna anchor i have as a backup I'm on my neighbor's catamaran and I'm invited for lunch. How lucky am I? <laughs> so what have you been making? <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, you're a chef. <laughs> Not only the captain, but you're the chef, right? <laughs> That's amazing. How nice is this? Sailing in Thomas. Yes. So you have subscribed to the channel? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, one already subscribed. Oh. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> so two new subscribers. Uh, maybe one more. And one more. <laughs> one more. <laughs> I know the uh, not yet subscribed, maybe. Yeah. Yes. No? <laughs> yes. Nanti lihat YouTube YouTube-nya like. Oh yeah. Subscribe. And of course, being in Indonesia, we need to make some photos documenting the meeting with this strange guy from Norway. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. Also thank you for helping me growing this channel by subscribing. And remember to hit that notification bell not to miss my Southeast Asia adventure. A special thanks to all my amazing patrons supporting and helping me following my dreams. I don't know what I would done without you guys. Much love from me on Be Free.